In this video, we're gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this photo. And we're gonna use some very cool little color tricks inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw to do it. In fact, some, some kind of, you know, I don't wanna say hidden, they're just a, it's just a color tool that a lot of people don't see because it's kind of tucked all the way down there at the bottom. Well, folks, my name is Matt Kleskowski and I wanna welcome you to this tutorial. Uh, we're gonna dive right in here. So this is a color setting that it, it can be used for a lot of things. And when we think of changing color, uh, especially in Lightroom or Camera Raw with our raw editor, we think we have you know temperature and tint and our white balance and we have hue and saturation where we can, we can manipulate colors. But if you look over here, I'm inside of Lightroom. If I go to the graduated filter or the radio filter or the adjustment brush, you're gonna see a little color setting down here that kind of, it kind of just, it stays under the radar because number one, it's just got a plain little square with an X over it that really nobody ever thinks to click on. Um, and I also, I think, I think there's some confusion about maybe when you would use this tool, you know, like what's the difference? Why would I use this over maybe temperature or hue and saturation? So we're gonna take a look at exactly that. We're gonna start off with a, a really techie example here. We will start to build where we can manipulate the, manipulate the color a little bit, um, or we can actually change the color of something in a way that we really can't do it any, any way else inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw, okay? All right, let's start off with this example here. What I'm gonna do is, uh, is I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close that up. I'm gonna go to the temperature slider. And I, when I wanna warm something, I'll usually just take the temperature and, and start to move it over here to the right. You can see when I go to the right, it's, it's warm. When I go to the left, it's, it's blue or colder. Same thing with tint, um, you know, red or green. We don't typically use tint creatively as much as we do temperature and tint. Doesn't mean you can't, uh, and I do sometimes, but mostly I wanna, I wanna take something and make it warmer, you know, especially landscape photos or certain portraits. So grab that slider, move it over here to the right hand side. Now let's go over, I made, a, I made a virtual copy, just right click and choose create virtual copy here. I made a virtual copy. We're gonna do it a different way, all right? We're gonna go and grab the gradient filter here, the graduated filter. And in, rather than do temperature, I'm gonna go down here over color I'm gonna click on that color swatch and I can choose whatever color I want. I'm gonna choose one of the defaults here, which is the kind of that super warm orangey yellow color. And you can choose you can choose the color and then you can choose the saturation, which basically just moves it up and down, uh, which controls the overall saturation of that color. And then what we're gonna do is I, I want to apply this to the whole photo. If I just click and drag, it's gonna obviously graduate across the whole photo. Uh, it's not what I want. I'm gonna click off the canvas and drag away. And you'll see that's a way to apply the graduated filter to the entire image, okay? It doesn't just apply it across the image, it applies it to the entire image. So uh, it's not gonna fade away at any point there. All right, so let's take a look at what just happened here. Okay, and this, this, is, this is where we can get kind of interesting. And by the way, when we're in the graduated filter here, if you're inside of Photoshop's Camera Raw and you go to any one of those tools that we had inside of Lightroom, uh, you can see down there, you have that color swatch down there as well. So it works inside of Camera Raw as well. So take a look, and the most important part of this is the histogram. That's why I picked a techie example first. I, I kind of want to test the boundaries of this. So if you look at the histogram, you can see it's just a gray to white gradient. But now that we've introduced color, you start to see some spikes of color. As I click and turn this histogram on and off, the, the tones of the histogram, for the most part, stay the same, right? I didn't really make anything brighter or darker. I just introduced a yellow warming tone to the entire photo. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, and let's go back to our other example here. And let's turn that one off. I'm gonna go back to the first example. There we go. And now in the basic panel, if you remember, we took the temperature slider, we cranked it up. Well, let's reset it. Just double click temperature. So look at the shape of the histogram and watch everything shift over to the right as I do this. And you can visibly see it in the photo. If you look at the grays, which would be the shadows in a photo, if you look, if you watch that, you could see it kind of goes away, right? Those grays start to fade away. So 
we are warming the photo. We're, we're obviously you know, changing the color temperature of the photo. In doing that, we're actually also brightening the photo. You're actually, you're changing the histogram. The photo will look brighter. Now, what I, I don't really wanna say what's right or wrong or better or worse in this case. In fact, I use them both for different things, okay? And that's what I hope to get across in this video here. There are times where I want a bright, warm feeling. And, and I'll add some temperature to that. I'll do exactly what I did here to get that type of a feeling. There's other times where I really just wanna manipulate the color. I don't want it to mess with the brightness or the darkness of everything. Okay, so that is our, uh, that's our techie example. Let's go take a look at real world. We will uh, we'll take this photo here and I will go, this is, uh, this is a little mountain range in Glacier National Park. Crank up the temperature you can visibly see, I mean, it makes the photo brighter. The sky, the, the clouds look brighter. You know, everything looks brighter in the photo. I'll go to the next one. Again, I just made a virtual copy. I'll go to the graduated filter, keep the same settings I had before, just click off the screen and just drag. And you can see here, it, it doesn't make anything brighter or darker. It just introduces a color to the photo, okay? All right, so, so where, I, and I wouldn't use it on this photo like this, but where would I use it? Well, let's go ahead and close this up. I would use it, I use it a lot of times on my landscape photos in the sky, all right? I use it, I use it in places where a color is acting stubbornly. I think that's the best way to say it because I can go down to hue and saturation and if I wanted to change the color of something, I, I could shift the color, but it's not really ever going to add color to something, right? It's just gonna shift the color. And then even at that, I can't really change the color because if I wanted to make something that was blue look red, I can't. I can make something that's blue look a different shade of blue, right? Because that's all I have control with hue. It's just gonna keep me in that blue family there. So I can't really change the color of anything. But I use it a lot in my skies. So rather than go and take the basic panel, let's, let's do some, some technical editing here and crank up my shadows a little bit, um, boost my whites a bit here, uh, maybe even add a little bit of saturation. And I would overall, I think I would warm the photo, right? So that's one way to take it. But the other thing that I notice, and this happens a lot in my, my skies, is I have a lot of gray still. All right? And this, sun, this sunrise, it just, it didn't cooperate. It looked like it, it's a pretty sunrise, don't get me wrong but I thought the whole sky was gonna light up and the, the sun must have gone behind a cloud right at sunrise or something because it kind of just held back from, from part of the sky and it just kept everything, uh, a big part of the sky still stayed gray throughout the sunrise there, okay? Ooh, real quick guys, I'm gonna ask you a big favor and that is uh, if you are, uh, wherever you're watching this, if you would go ahead and like or subscribe, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. If you're on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button. You'll get notifications when I do new videos. If you're on Facebook, just hit the like button on my Facebook page. Then of course you'll get notifications for that stuff as well, okay? Okay, back over here to our tutorial. So the, the way that I would really take this, let's pull back on our temperature here. All right, and, and this, is, this is gonna be a heavy edit and, and I'm okay with it, it's, it's my photo, but I, sometimes I like really super saturated photos. If you don't, you should stop watching now. Um, so instead of adding some warmth to the sky, I'm gonna go down here to my color and I'm gonna push this over toward the reddish orange area here. And I'm gonna click and drag down and you can see it totally changes that sky, all right? now. If I were to compare this and get rid of that and just add some warmth to it, the warmth, it accentuates the warmer colors, but it tends to kind of leave the gray alone. It doesn't really infuse any color into that gray. And that's why I usually stay away from it for there. So if I really want to kind of infuse color into something, that's when I'll jump over here and I'll go into these color pickers. And again, I'll use kind of an orangey reddish type of a color in this example. Um, it's pretty heavy handed. I'm okay with that, I kind of like it. I might, I might back off a, a little bit on the saturation here, maybe down to there. Um, what I would do from here is I think I'd go down here. I'd still add some warmth to it. And that'll just kind of give the overall kind of balanced warmth. Uh, I could always go back to my graduated filter and I could drag one up from the bottom 
and that's way too much for the bottom, but there's nothing saying I can't go down here to my color picker and really pull back, really reel that in. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tackling my sky and then my foreground separately, but I'm using that whole same color family to do it. All right, so that's, a, that's an example how I would take this one. If I were to finish it up, I'd probably go over here to my vignette. A little, I already did apparently <laughs> add a little bit of a vignette in there and you got your before and your after. I'm not saying I actually like the blue version better. It's got a very cool feeling to it. So uh, I enjoyed kind of just playing around with this one and I, I took it in a couple of different directions. All right, let's look at our last photo here. So I had mentioned changing the color and this tool can be really useful to do that. So instead of using the grad filter, I would go and use the adjustment brush. And by the way, this is uh, this photo is from Colin Hegan. Uh, I do these uh, a series called Photo Makeovers and I do some webinars and I ask people to submit photos. So this was one great photo that Colin submitted. Um, I thought, you know, I like the fall colors. Obviously, I mean, some beautiful reds in there. I thought if I could take a little bit of that dormant look away from the grass, it could be pretty cool. So we grab the brush and we go down here to the color swatch. I'm not gonna use orange, I'm gonna use a greenish color. All right. And I'm gonna tell you right off of the bat, it's gonna look bad. I'm selling this one really well, aren't I? It's gonna look bad at first, but we're gonna go through here, we'll paint. All right, we'll go over here and paint. We're going to fix this, but this will at least get us started. All right, so now we're, we're kind of adding that green tint to the photo. Now, we can't really get there with just the color tint, right? I, I can go a, a brighter green, which just looks radioactive, or I can go a little saturated, which still takes it more toward yellow. So I would leave it about where we had it. What will help bring this one home is a little bit of exposure. So reduce that exposure a little bit. like so. I could always maybe even desaturate it a little bit here. But as you start to manipulate the exposure, now you can really get in there and you can dial that in to, to get a more realistic color. I don't know whether that I want a bright green and you know spring, summer type of a tone to it, but something a little bit more, just a little bit more life to it than the previous one had. So we can go in there and change the color that way. And I mean, if, even if I paint on the mountains, it, it adds a nice color. Again, this is a fall photo, so I, I don't necessarily know I need to do it on this photo, but for those photos where you know the colors are kind of lagging a little bit, this is a really good way to go in there you don't want saturation, right? You don't want, you don't just want to saturate everything. And it's, it's not like you just want to go in there and change the temperature because we saw where that one can fall apart a little bit. So when you really need a lot of control over your colors, uh, that little color swatch is a great place to go check it out. Okay. One last thing, one last thing is a, is a tip for you. And that is sometimes you're going to want to get rid of it. Um, so the way to get rid of it, you don't have to click on it and then go and reset. The way to get rid of it is just go over here and double click the word color and that'll, that'll just zero it out. Basically goes to that little X and that little swatch that it was in there before. It's the same on every slider. If you double click a slider inside a Lightroom, uh, it resets it back to its default value. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will talk to you again real soon.